Where am I going and why? Well, today I'm going to look around the area where Native Americans, Yocha Dehi Wintu Nation as they are called, live. They have been living here in Cape Valley for thousands of years. In 1492, when Columbus reached the New World, what do you think was the American Indian population in 1492? The answer may surprise you. 60 million. Yes, that's six zero. And what was the population of Europe, excluding Russia and Ottoman Empire? It was 62 million. So basically the same. And today, population of Europe, excluding Russia, is about 600, 630 million. And how many Native Americans are there in the US? A little over 5 million. So, what a disaster for Native Americans. In 500 years, they lost 90% of their population and Europe gained over 1,000. The tribe currently has three areas where they get income from. The main one, obviously, is the casino. But they also, over the years, based on my information, bought over 10,000 acres of their ancestral land, which is kind of ironic that they had to buy the land that uh, belonged to them. But it is what it is, and they also have some outside investments. So, I was just told that this is a private housing. Uh, I cannot go inside and my guess, guess, guess is that this is where the tribe members live behind the wall in this compound because there is a tribal office behind the wall and the security guard basically told the private property to elaborate what it is. But of course, Google and so on gives me the information so I know what it is. My guess is that this is one of the tribes or charts and the trees, and those are almond trees, and let's see what the sign says, Yochadihi Farm and Ranch, yeah, bingo, that's it. Nice property here. Awesome opportunity. And on the left, I would say, is the ranch part of the property. So let's continue on a little bit. Let's see. There is anything interesting. In front of us, at the end of the parking lot, is the fire department. The tribe has one and only 24 hour, 24 by 7 professional fire department in the county. And on the hill, some solar panels basically this is very sunny area my guess would be like 300 days of sun per year at least not much rain in winter and down there is a mini mart convenience store and a gas station and behind is the land or charts that they cultivate. I think the trees ahead of us, the orchard is either olives or almonds because they also grow almonds. Actually a lot of farmers in this valley grow almonds and they have an almond festival here once a year. And 
by the way, they also produce honey, so they are into bees. Okay, so this is 245 acres with creek frontage for sale. Yeah, Cash Creek, that's where the casino got its name. Cash Creek is somewhere on the right behind the orchard here. They are certainly not the biggest tribe in the US. That distinction goes to a small tribe in Southern California, tribe of 12, seven adults and I think five children. Yocha Dihi membership is quite small as well, according to various pieces of info. That is something between 60 and probably not higher than a hundred. And which tribes are the largest? Well, the number one is Cherokee Nation with maybe around 650,000 people. And the second are Navajo, 300,000 people. But economic disparity is huge and overall average income varies by tribe and can range from about $20,000 in the Osagi tribe to a mere 11000 in Tohono O'odham tribe. And over 20% of Native American reservation households make less than 5,000 US dollars annually, while only 6% of the overall US population has an annual income of less than 5,000 USD. So just based on this, proportionally, there are three times more Native Americans living in extreme poverty. Well, the arrival of missionaries basically was the beginning of the decline that changed everything for native people in America and uh, also in the in the US. Many Vintun people were enslaved to serve the missions while abuse and disease uh, further dwindled their numbers. By 1800s, many of Vintun ancestors were purged of their home and hunting lands by people driven by gold and greed. So gold rush also had a huge negative impact and federal policies actually legalized genocide and slavery. In early 1900s, the tribe was forcibly removed from their village by the US government and placed on federally created reservation. They struggled to survive and in 1940, they finally got uh, from the US government a small piece of land here in Cape Valley where they managed to cultivate small amounts of food. And in 1980s, the tide began to turn. Some ancestral lands were restored to the tribe uh, and it provided a land base for housing and economic development. And also state of California um, created a law that basically gave opportunity to the American Indians, um, to, to the Native Americans to build casinos and of course casinos can be a huge economic engine. So they started with Cash Creek Indian Bingo Hall and eventually it developed into a full-fledged casino. It is today five-star casino. And that basically helped the tribe to become economically independent and to be able to support themselves uh, 
quite nicely. Even though they are quite wealthy now by any standard, the road of these people to get where they are now, both financially and with... So here I am in Capay Valley. That's where Yochadihi, sovereign nation, Indian tribe, operates the casino and owns uh, a huge chunk of land. In front of me is the valley with the fields and orchards. Here it's kind of uh, the area that's getting a little bit higher to the hills. That's, uh, that's the all. Uh, that's the end of the valley or the side of the valley actually. And this is kind of interesting. I don't know what those trees are. Maybe almonds. Uh, but almonds need a lot of water and this looks like the owner gave up on the trees. They still survive but not prune, some of them dying. Really interesting here. Just imagine how it looked like in the 19th century when Europeans started coming to this area. Hills, hills, and down there in the valley, farming land. And I think it must have looked pretty interesting and it is even now it's a agricultural area olive tree little olives and this is Seca Hills olive mill that the tribe owns and uh, let's go inside let's have a look and you can sit outside and taste. I guess they will have wine also. Welcome. No indoor seating. You see stuff inside the tasting room to be seated at an outdoor table.
So, what is the conclusion here? Quite frankly, I don't know. Uh, make your own conclusion, but my personal feeling is that even though they are quite wealthy now, by any standard, the road of these people to get where they are now, both financially and with regard to the survival, was long and hard over the last several hundred years. So if some envy or other thoughts crossed your mind, hmm, just put yourself into the shoes of their ancestors, put yourself into their shoes 50 years ago, 40 years ago, what they have or what they had to go through and how many of them have perished, stripped of their way of life and culture, not to mention the land they left off. So I say, all power to your Chadihi, Vintun nation, and good luck, nothing more to say.